What's up, futurist furry therapist? In this video, we're gonna be breaking down the volume waveform during mechanical ventilation. What does it tell you? How can you troubleshoot it? How can you use it to make you be a better respiratory therapist? Let's dive in. Okay, so as I stated today, we're talking about the volume waveform. Let's go ahead and jump into it and show you what the volume waveform looks like. This is an example of the volume waveform. Now what you need to understand first of all is that each of these are a breath. So we're seeing four different breaths on this screen. Now these are divided into two different examples because I want to show you something. If you notice here, you see where these breaths are coming in at about the same level all the way across. Let's just say this was 500 milliliters. Well, that is telling you that these breaths are coming up and coming back down, and each one is the same in terms of size. So you wouldn't be shocked to see this type of waveform where all of your breaths are the same size when we're in volume control, because we know when we're in volume control, we are controlling volume. So we see that our tidal volumes will all be the same. Now, we look over here on the second example here, we see something different. We see a volume that comes in and then exhaled out. The next breath comes in and is exhaled out. But they are at two different levels. So we have to ask ourselves, what could this be? Let's say this first one was at 500 mLs and this second one was at 300 milliliters. Okay, how would we have a situation with mechanical ventilation to where we are getting varying volumes? Well, simple. One possibility is that we are in pressure control because we know in pressure control, we control pressure and now volume is allowed to vary. So if compliance decreases, then you will see tidal volumes go down. If airway resistance increases, then you will see tidal volumes go down if we're in pressure control. So perhaps here we are in pressure control. We might also though be in SIMV. And so if we were in SIMV, we would have a controlled breath here, and then this may be a spontaneous breath, which we know is typically smaller than controlled breaths. Not always, but a lot of times you see controlled breaths typically larger than spontaneous efforts. Now maybe there's some pressure support on here. Maybe we need to add some pressure support onto this spontaneous effort. Nonetheless, when looking at the volume waveform, all you're seeing is how much volume is going in and how much is coming back out. However much goes in, this should return to baseline. So when I say return to baseline, I mean all the way back down here to zero, which means everything that went in now came out. That's what we mean when we say return to baseline. Now we talked about returning to baseline with flow and here we are talking about it again with volume because when the volume waveform does not return to baseline, notice these two situations right here. This is again the volume waveform, volume goes in, volume comes out, but it does not return to baseline. This is gonna be a problem. Same thing here. In, out, does not return to baseline. This and this, two different situations. Now what do I do when the volume doesn't return to baseline? Well, the truth is, is that it can be one of two things and you're gonna to wanna to remember both of them. It might be air trapping. So if the patient takes a breath in, let's say they take 400 milliliters in, but they only exhale 350 of it before taking the next breath. That is by definition air trapping, not fully exhaling before taking the next breath. That's air trapping. 
If that happens, you will see that the flow waveform also will not return to baseline. So remember when we talked about the flow waveform, when flow fails to return to baseline, it means, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's evidence of air trapping. Same thing here. If the volume waveform doesn't return to baseline, you have to look at your flow. If it doesn't return to baseline, this is air trapping. Now look what's happening over here. Volume is not returning to baseline. Oh, but flow is, which tells you this is associated with a leak. Now, what does a leak mean, Joe? Well, typically you're gonna start at your patient's endotracheal cuff. So make sure that you don't have a cuff leak. If you don't have a cuff leak, make sure all your connections are tight on your mechanical ventilation. Make sure all your caps are closed because those things, as small as they can be, can cause varying size leaks. Make sure, ask yourself, is my patient being treated for a pneumothorax? And if so, are there bubbles in the water seal chamber? Because if so, you are going to be leaking some of your volume out into that pleural space and through your chest tube, and it will not be exhaled back to the ventilator. So a leak can be multiple things. You have to figure out exactly which one it is. Remember, always start at your patient. You don't want to go in there looking for a leak and start over here looking at the ventilator and neglecting your patient over here. Okay, so start always at your patient, which is going to be first at the cuff and then work your way back. Don't forget about the chest tube when you're deciding and trying to figure out where is a leak. Now, that's where we are. It's this simple. Let me clean this up just a little bit. Here's what we're talking about. Identify the failure to return to baseline and then look to see if the flow is coming back or not. If not, air trapping. If so, leak. That's the volume waveform. Now you know what we're gonna do now. I've got a couple of volume waveform questions that we're gonna pose to you. Be sure and pause this video um, after you see the illustration and I will let you know uh, what the answer is here, okay? So your patient is receiving CMV in the pressure control assist control mode. You observe the following flow waveform. What is the best explanation for this observance? Okay, go ahead and pause this right now if you wanna see through, see if you get this answer correctly before I talk about it. I'm gonna keep talking, but feel free to pause and answer this question. Now, what we notice here, and as I look at this, I say, okay, I've got a, 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 a I know, I already know I'm in pressure control, so I already know that my pressure waveform is gonna be square in nature. They told me that in the scenario. So now I gotta look at this and go, okay, why are you telling me to observe my volume waveform. It's gotta be something related to either air trapping, a leak, or a change in compliance or resistance. So let's take a look at this and see what it is. Here I've got my decelerating flow pattern. Already knew that was coming because we're in pressure control. And here's my waveform, my, my flow wave, my volume waveform coming up and not returning to baseline. I see this right here and I go, er, this is a problem. Another breath not returning to baseline, another problem. What am I gonna do in this situation? I see this, I see this, I'm gonna look up here, look up here, and everything, because my flow is returning to baseline, my flow is returning to baseline, then I know it is not air trapping. I also know because I'm not coming back to baseline here, that this means I have a leak. Now, could it be decreased static compliance, increased airway resistance? That's why I'm getting smaller tidal volumes. It could be. But in this situation, because I'm coming back to baseline, I'm not coming back to baseline, then that's not the answer. There is a leak somewhere and we have to find it. Let's look at the next question. 
Uh, your patient is receiving CMV in the pressure control assist control mode. Again, important right here, we know we're in pressure control. You observe the following volume waveform. Why are they telling me to look at the volume waveform? It, that, makes, that right there makes the game extremely simple. What is the best explanation for this observance? Well, let's take a look at it. Now, here we are again. We have a decelerating flow pattern. Again, we knew we were going to have that because we're in pressure control. But what I notice here is that this is failing to return the baseline before the next breath. Both of these are, right? So that right there stands out to me right off the bat. So I'm like, okay, well, let's see what's happening here. Because right now, I'm already thinking air trapping. Because remember, any time the flow waveform doesn't return to baseline, it's an indication of air trapping. Well, let's take a second because they told us to look at the volume waveform. So let's look at it. The volume waveform comes up, down. Oh, look at this problem we have right here. Doesn't return to baseline. Oh, here we are over here. Doesn't return to baseline. We know that when the volume doesn't return to baseline, we look up at the flow. And this says that this patient is air trapping. You see, this one is not a leak because our flow does not return back to baseline. That's how we know this one is air trapping. We need to give this person a longer time to exhale. Now, again, decreased static compliance, increased airway resistance, because our volume's not coming back to baseline, that's why our volumes are varying right now. So the best we can choose at this question is that this patient is air trapping and we need to figure out why. One more question for you. Your patient is receiving CMV in the pressure control, assist control mode. You observe the following volume waveform and we note a new onset of expiratory wheezing. Okay, see, we just got more information this time. Okay, we got more information and it's happening bilaterally. Pressure control, look at the volume waveform, expiratory wheezing, what is the best explanation of this observance? Hmm, let's see what it looks like. Flow waveform, up, decelerates, back to baseline. Up, decelerates, back to baseline. Interesting, back to baseline, back to baseline. We can come down literally right now, right now, we could come down and eliminate air trapping because the flow waveform comes back to baseline. Okay, that's all it does, it comes back to baseline. So now we notice that our volume waveform comes up and guess what? Back to baseline. Up, back to baseline. Okay, so this is interesting. We don't have air trapping because our flow returns to baseline. We also don't have a leak because everything we're putting in, we're getting back. Everything that goes in comes back. So it's not a leak. So why do we have varying tidal volumes? Because remember, we're in pressure control. Volume will vary. So is it because the lungs have become stiffer? Or is it because we have an increase in our airway resistance. And remember I told you something very important in this scenario. There's a reason why they told you that there was a new onset of expiratory wheezing. Expiratory wheezing is an indication of bronchospasm. Bronchospasm will cause your airway resistance to increase. And that is the correct answer to this question. It is not a static compliance issue. The bronchospasm is saying, hey, we got an increase in airway resistance because the scenario told us that, okay? So that's the volume waveform. Hope it makes sense. Remember, you can find me on all the socials, Instagram, TikTok. Coach RRT on Twitter. Send me an email to respiratorycoach at gmail.com 
You can text me at 1-817-968-7035. Join my texting platform where I send out occasional informational, um, motivational, inspirational concepts. Sometimes I just say happy birthday to you uh, if you let me know when your birthday is. Uh, but I want to go back to this right quick. This right here, this is my email, respiratorycoach at gmail.com. Now, everything you just saw in this video, I have prepared on a cheat sheet. I call it my waveforms and loops cheat sheet. I offered this with my pressure waveform, with my flow waveform prior to this video, and now with this video. If you want a copy of this cheat sheet, all you have to do is send me an email right here, respiratorycoach at gmail.com. I will send you that cheat sheet for absolutely free. I don't want anything from you. I just want you to be a better respiratory therapist and I hope to bring you value. That's all I care about. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave me a comment and share this everywhere you can so we can get the message out about this channel and the work we're trying to do here to promote and grow the field of respiratory therapy. That's how to contact me. That's the volume waveform. Remember, average is easy. Don't be it.